Bonjour again, Ferrari collectors in 164 scale. So we have this uh, set here, but I want to talk about this car. We're reading some Wikipedia. I did go on the Ferrari website, but they have so much flash animation going on there. It bothers me. So this marks the return of Ferrari to the World Endurance Championship, which is the 24 hours of Le Mans and other endurance races. I consider this to be the you know top level of racing for grip traction racing. I still kind of think rally racing might be more technically difficult since they jump cars and tra travel on different surfaces. But these guys are running at night. They're running it in the rain. You know, they're running for 24 hours and I believe there's only three drivers. So imagine driving, you know, 250, 300 kilometer, you know, <laughs> two, over 200 miles per hour or over 300 kilometers an hour at night for eight hours. Uh, granted, they do shifts and stuff like that, but it's very tiring. You know, the G-Force is taking turns in these things. Random stuff, sorry. Anyway, so uh, Ferrari came back to this type of racing and they won the championship in 2023 with the number 51 car here. The number 50 was named that because, you know, it's the 50th year since they came to race this type of event. So a couple of bits of credit have to be given here. The constructors, Ferrari and Dallara. Dallara makes all sorts of race cars. And then uh, designer, on many designers, but under chief uh, director, Flavio Manzoni. Although I gotta say, this looks absolutely nothing like a Ferrari other than the fact that it's red. You know, it's, this is engineering, aerodynamics, I think more than just styling, right? Okay, well anyways, uh, the predecessor was a 333 SP, which I she'll bring out as a Kyosho. It's carbon fiber, of course, double wishbone suspension. It has a twin turbocharged v, uh, V6, making around 670 horsepower or 680 PS. Yeah, but it's also a hybrid system, so in the front axle they have a, an electric motor making an additional 268 horsepower uh, or 272 PS. And uh, that, I think, only kicks in when you're going above like 118 miles per hour uh, due to the racing regulations. So it's not about actually uh, accelerating out of turns. It's actually just to perhaps make it faster at those super high speeds. Well, over 120 miles per hour or so. Okay, so I think that's uh, it's running on 18-inch OZ wheels, uh, which I assume are me metal wheels, maybe magnesium. I'm not sure if they allow carbon fiber wheels in the WEC. Maybe that's why they're metal. Maybe they just decide that's more durable for such long distances. I don't know. It also has six piston Brembo monoblock brakes. Okay, so that's what I cared to learn about this from Wikipedia. Obviously that could all be wrong, but it seems to correlate with a lot of the stuff on the Ferrari website itself. Okay, I did quite take a peek at this thing because there's some glue residue. Uh, it came in a cardboard box and stuff like that. I got this one off AliExpress. I'm pretty sure they're all sold out because I was just looking for the winning car. Uh, which it did sell individually, but those things are all sold out. So I had to get the double set, both cars, in order to get the winning car. So as you can see, this is a serious cardboard box. Um, I usually complain about that sort of stuff because it's going to become garbage for most people, I think. Uh, you can also see on the back there's no licensing here on the, at all. So if you have ethical concerns, uh, you better stick to licensed products. I was watching a Champion DJK channel, uh, his video about something, and he mentioned licensing. And he mentioned that Ferrari gave Hot Wheels and Barago their licenses, and those companies are garbage compared to what you're going to see inside this. So you can get licensed garbage, or you can get something that's going to totally blow your mind. So that's me. I'm unethical. I'm, I'm a bad person. I'm going to the the, the lower part of the uh, afterlife than the, the nice heavenly blue part. Okay, well, anyways, uh, yeah. So here's a reveal. We got... A nice like Photoshop uh, filter going on on probably of them coming in to win the race or something. Uh, so that looks pretty neat. Then we have the actual boy box, which is really all I'm after. But I guess you know if you have to ship this, this acrylic actually isn't very thick in its proportion to its size so maybe that is a reason why you could justify paying for this box which I'm gonna guess cost me at least ten dollars 
because shipping it. I don't want that thing to be ruined. Okay, so it is taped together. I am going to take the cover off, but I'm going to assume most people won't. So I want to show it a little bit with the cover on. And so you can still see the nameplate here. So there you go. You know what the car is, you know what the numbers are, and you know the drivers. It would have been kind of nice if they said this side were the winners of the 2023 Le Mans. It, and it does kind of say Le Mans there, but it doesn't say 2023. I think it could have been cool if maybe on this side they printed on either the metal plate it was etched in or printed on this bottom plate 2023 WC Le Mans champion or something like that right and then this is clearly an acrylic base as it still has a protective wrap on it it's got four screws holding each car on and then you have this round tape here which I shall take off and have to put some other tape on back later I will never take these off the display base yeah, the antennae are so sensitive I'm just taking this off so we can look at the, the photographs a little bit better. But, uh, boy, just looking at them through the box, they look fantastic. Again, uh, if these were made by Hot Wheels, uh, no, they're not going to look fantastic. They'll look okay for the price of a Hot Wheels, but they won't look like the photographs. Same said about Barago. Oh. Okay, so pretty thin. Oh, there's a third tape in the back. Yeah, that's a pretty thin, flop, almost floppy cover. Oh, it's, well, let's see here. How did it go about doing this? It's so difficult. It's difficult enough just to take a car off its base and compare it to photographs behind it. But now we're taking a giant based vehicle and a photograph. But look at that. that that's almost kind of close. The wheels. What are you doing, fine model? Why are these wheels silver? So that's that's a big issue, right? These are gunmetal colored wheels. When they should clearly be black. Uh, historically, I don't like black wheels, but in this case, we're trying to actually mimic uh, the car that won the, the 24 Hours of Le Mans, right? So that's that's messed up. I don't know what you guys are thinking, fine model. That's like a... <laughs> all right i can go on and on so i won't uh i guess we'll have to shift to this side for the side view here with the number 50. so what boy unless they released a set which actually has black wheels maybe they did leave a comment if you have one of these cars with black wheels one of these models with black wheels that is yeah boy Man, that's that's so distracting. I I'm mean, so wrong. Mm. Boy, that's a hard comparison as well. It was really hard to even find images of a car, this car from the rear view, because they usually try to hide all that aerodynamic stuff. You got the double horizontal wings with the light on the lower lower wing. These little vents, like shark gills, and the side plates, and they're there on the model. Okay, let me get the mouse here, and here's one with kind of a top, more of a top body view. You notice this one has yellow mirrors, uh, whereas the number 51 car is black mirrors. So that's well, that's correct. The number 51 has black mirrors. And yeah, the other one does have yellow mirrors. So at least they got that right. How can they get the mirror color right and not the wheels right? Very, very strange. So if you're new to my channel, you're going to find that I'm a bitter old man. <laughs> I generally do like to, you know, get nice things for when I buy them with my own money. And like, it's such a glaringly obvious fault to have the wheels a different color oh boy now i can't even get my fingers under this all right we're gonna just start with this number 50 car and 
We're gonna shift between the two cars because the camera can only see one side of each. Well, let's see. I mean, the wheel. It has the same shape, the double five spokes, but you can clearly see. Uh, the first, the, the, the paint is actually not covering the full rim. Uh, I can see right there, this paint missing. But second, all the molding flash on the back end of the spokes, it looks pretty horrible. You can see some slotted uh, brake calipers, which are the same color, which doesn't make sense. I don't, well, actually, I take that back. Looking at the side photograph, this looks like it has gunmetal colored rotors and then uh, like goldish uh, calipers, which I kind of see there. So the, I think the brake system has the proper color, it's just the wheel itself doesn't. There's also no additional color in the center caps of the wheels, like these should be yellow. Okay. It's nice that it has the Michelin Pilot Sport decals there on the tires. The tires are also rounded, like a like the real car does, so that's good. You can see the red itself is not metallic, it's just like uh, some sort of Ferrari red of some sort. Maybe Corso red or something, or Corsa red. Uh, then we have this uh, carbon fiber strake going above the fender. It's got a carbon fiber graphic going on, same with basically everywhere else. And I'm going to assume those are decals right now, yeah, because you can see a little bit of air pocketing there. You can see the side of this headlight cover is really nicely shaped, fitting into the recess of the headlight itself. Uh, the prancing horse obviously is not quite vertical and is very pixelated. It's very poorly printed. Uh, it's really strange. If you look at the hypercar, how crisp the letters are, why is this so blurry? I don't know if they did that to try to avoid licensing problems, but it's just weird. I think if you're gonna make an illegal product, you should do it well. Uh, and such a simple graphic like that, when all the other graphics look good. It's like they downloaded the Ferrari logo at 10 p p pixels per inch, and then decided to print that image. Very strange. I don't know if this is a physical break here, or a bit of extra black paint. We'll have to see when I get to the other side. Uh, going down here, we have the yellow mirrors for number 50, which makes sense. And then we have a bunch of uh, silver circles. I think those illuminate. Uh, I, I don't know what the sequencing or colors are, but I have a suspicion those illuminate when they're leaving pit, pit row or something. No clue what that red, I mean that black circle will be. Uh, but I do see it on the number 50 car images on the monitor. I don't know what that thing is. Okay, WEC is legible. Can't really see the same to the text below. You know, let me get a different pick. This one's all messed up. I'm precariously balancing this thing, so it's uh, kind of difficult. And then uh, my camera's on the spring boom, so that tends to wobble as well. All right, well, anyways, I think it's in focus now. And we have a nice pick here. So, okay, the mirrors are pointed downwards a little bit. It looks like a carbon graphic going around the window frame as a separate piece. It literally is, here's a thin packaging window and then there's a, oh, that's a decal. That's a decal, it's not a piece of metal. Okay, but then it, it's inset to this because you can see a little bit of the red of the door frame. So that's pretty interesting. That's a lot of effort right there. Let me hit focus again. There's so much stuff going on in these cars. Um, there's a lot of speculation that I'm gonna say like this. I would speculate that's a fuel filler. It looks like it's metal. I don't know if it's photo etched metal, but it's, I don't know if it's just silver paint, but it looks fantastic. Uh, we have a whole bunch of dark details down here. Boy, now here's a bigger challenge, getting a flashlight. Okay, it looks like there's a strake right there. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think I can see the edge of a strake, like a photo etched piece of metal with a carbon decal on it. I can't point at it because I've run out of hands. Uh, this thing. I think that's a separate piece right there. Alright. Let's see here. 
and then uh, that vent up front is going in there pretty well pretty far in this one is looks like it's going in there deep enough it's all darkness so it's fine to the naked eye I think you'd have a hard time really seeing too much of it anyways all right going to the rear wheel the rear miscolored wheel <laughs> it's so annoying uh, yeah the tire looks good and all that the molding on this wheel is slightly better than the other one what is this that's part of the molding is black and then uh, this carbon graphic looks good uh, it's probably a decal if I had to guess but it's laid on very well same with the graphics on top or part of that same graphic and then here's while we're at the rear wing you can see the openings those three slats the shark gills openings passing air the carbon graphic on these verticals looks pretty good it's a nice tight weave it looks like it's interesting it's actually different than the you know the weave down here the lower car in that central scoop has what looks like the angled carbon fiber one is accustomed to but the the vertical fins here it's a different texture uh, you know they're it's different so I think that's cool that they went through that trouble oh boy what else all right going around well let's go around to the front before we get to the top so the headlights one on the left one on the right uh, I'm gonna assume those are decals just the fine dots of them yeah but they have you know plastic covers I don't think they're actually covers on the inner set of lights. It's just on the outer set of lights. Uh, so I can't really tell on the uh, real photos if they're covered or not. One would assume they would because a little rocks flying up at 200, 300 miles per hour. Well, the car going that fast, the rocks not really moving too much. But anyways, uh, destroy a bunch of LEDs. It's hard to say. I can't tell if there's a cover on those middle parts. Maybe there is. Maybe over here I can check. Hold on. It's hard to even know where my pick is. I go, oh yeah, you know, it is covered up. It's just so clear, I couldn't even tell. It, it almost looks looks like a different thing over on the front view because it's not catching the light, whereas the side piece parts are catching some glare. All right, you can see the curvature of the chin spoiler there, and you can see the red, white, and green flag there on the lower middle, which looks good. Uh, some sort of scoops going on under there. Maybe those go to the brakes if I had to guess. I don't know what the black box in the middle would be for. Maybe a camera or a different scoop to the interior maybe. Just guessing again as usual. Alright, uh, let's go to the top of this one then. I'm going to put this down and move the camera down. Let's try this. hard for me to actually see the camera screen the phone screen here it's a galaxy a7 it's an old phone but it does a pretty good job of viewing small models now I am still gonna have to shift this around I was hoping I wouldn't have to move it at all because my hands are fidgety but uh, I think I am gonna have to move it still so you can see it's got these carbon graphics here for whatever these deflectors are over the openings for the wheels and it's nice that you can actually see you know the, the tires here which I gotta say, don't, those don't feel very soft. They might actually be plast hard. I don't know. I don't know if those are rubbery. Not that I care. Uh, you'd be a fool to try to make this thing roll. Uh, okay. So, anyways, we got some sort of decal. You can see the wrinkliness of it. Uh, maybe some air pockets right there behind that decal. There's a central wiper blade. It looks like. Yeah, all right. I got the ch boy. Let's go higher. So you can see this like bent 90 degree piece of metal right there in the middle of the hood. I don't know what that that is. Please leave a comment if you know. I'm guessing it's a speed sensor or something like an airplane would have, but I, I really don't know. And then look at the wiper blade. It's vertical. It's hollowed out. It's got to be a piece of photo etched metal. It's very impressive, very thin. It might be the 
thinnest wiper blade I've ever seen in this scale. It's very cool. You can clearly see that uh, antenna there sticking up, and it is like thinner than most people's hair. Boy, what a pain to put that in. There's only one. Uh, the other car actually has two antenna. You can see there. So uh, I don't know. I don't know if that's accurate or not, but. It looks like it is because it's only like one hole for that antenna whereas on this side uh, maybe you can see this it looks like it's going into two holes so that's interesting you would get that detail and then you have some vertical carbon piece right in the top of the windshield slash roof it's interesting separate piece no. then you have two verticals going to the sides of the roof as separate pieces yeah, that's really cool. I mean, these, this thing has so many parts on it, it's just crazy. And yet, they got the wheels wrong. Alright, anyways, the scoop on the roof. You got three inlets like the real car has. Uh, they could got get enough paint in there. Uh, I'm going to just leave it alone, though. It's fine. And actually, the other model does have black paint all the way in there. So, this one does not. Yeah, I don't know what that silver thing is on the top. Maybe a camera or something. I don't know what AdWord does. Uh, sponsorship there. So this scoop thing also looks like it has vertical metal pieces with on it. Like they're so thin. I don't. I can't see this camera screen. I gotta change the angle here. See, so right above the. This, this is crazy. Ugh, oh, I gotta avoid the other model. Hold on. Look at these, look how thin these things are. These, these th vertical strakes. There's five vertical strakes on the top of this vehicle. All separate pieces. And then that thing there, that silver thing, whatever it is, is cool. I like that you can see, you know, all this air passing through the wings there in the back. And then you notice on the back wing, on the yellow, there's four vertical strakes there as well. Or maybe those are adjusters for the wing angle. All right. In fact, also the mirrors also look like they have these vertical strakes. I don't know if those are molded into the mirrors or separate metal pieces because they're so thin. It makes me think that they're separate pieces. All right. So we got some vents here oh boy yeah so that's a decal and that's an air pocket going over the vent so that's a little sketchy you don't want to touch that it'll crack same here that that thing is pushed in which is nice but i have a suspicion it might be floating all right a lot of extra printing or decals i mean this thing's so smooth it looks i don't know if that's a decal or not this one is you can see the edge of it uh, I'm going to guess these things are the exhausts, like blended into the body. You got more of that carbon piece here. Look, it's nicely done. It might actually be clear coated. I don't... You see how wrinkly this black is? That's a raw decal on the surface of the model. But you see how smooth that is? It, it's possible that might be under the clear coat. Possible. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, this is pretty smooth, too. All right, uh, moving around to the back, I guess. Yeah, that wing, yeah, those adjusters there. Oh, really cool. So I think there are taillights, that light bar is just a decal of white dots. It works. You can see in the middle it's kind of orange and then red and then white, which I assume are the backups or something. It's effective. It's an uh, interesting uh, way to go about doing it. All right. And then the diffuser is carbon on it, as I assume a decal. There's some sort of thin red thing here. I don't know if that's a separate piece, but it's very thin. I have to assume it's a separate photo etch metal. Uh, I'm gonna get the flashlight. Let's see what's, what else we can see back here. All right, you can see the tire way in there. All right, the carbon doesn't go in, and that's fine. It'd be really difficult to do. Okay, so that's really neat. I mean, I 
I like the shaping of race cars. You know, they're trying to cheat the wind. So, the evolution of race cars is one reason why you might want to collect small scale models of them. Or large scale if you can afford it. Alright, so that was number 50. But it's the number 51 car that actually won the race. So, what makes it different are those two antenna up top. The color of the mirrors here. Now the mirrors, let's see if, if they have a carbon graphic on it. I don't think there's carbon. Uh, it's hard to say. It might just be dark gray. Uh, you can see this front wheel is not very good either. Again, with the molding process of it. Um, yeah, it's a real shame. This prancing horse again. <laughs> it's very blurry. Very fat. It's a fat horse. Oh boy, the rear wheel's even worse as far as, you know, the extra flash in here. So, it's interesting that they would mold the wheels on these. Um, I think they should use 3D printing. If they were 3D printed, they wouldn't have any of this extra flash. Uh, just watch some of my 3D printed wheel videos that I do on Hot Wheels, and you'll see that's not an issue. So you can see the alignment of this wheel is totally messed up, like it got in a wreck. It should be pushed forward more. There's so much air right here, and so little here. But that's not good. Alright. It's got that same 90 degree bent piece of metal coming up there. Um, that all looks fine. What a cool looking car. It's, it's just so, there's so much going on on these vehicles. Uh, whether it's a Ferrari or any of these modern LMP cars, they're, they're just so cool looking. Uh, Alright, so hold on. Now, I don't know about the interior, if we're going to see much in them. They're black, as race cars usually do have black interiors. There's some molding here on the, the dashboard. Alright, some sort of curvature and swoopiness to them. Uh, let's see, I'm going to have to try to resituate the camera again. Maybe go in right there. I'm going to put the camera on the table. Hit focus. Get the flashlight and see if we can overpower some of the glare. There's obviously something yellow in there. I can't tell what it is. Hmm. You know what I don't see are the racers' names. Should they not be on the car somewhere? There's a lot of yellow going on in that interior. What is what is that stuff? Unfortunately, it's such a curved windscreen. Which does bring up the point. I don't know if this uh, window is molded like a regular die-cast car has. I think it is. And, and I think that's good uh, in this case. Let me, let me touch it and see if it bends. Oh boy, it does bend. No, so this is super thin packaging plastic. And they may have painted it, which is why it looks a little grainy. I think they may have painted it like a smoked smoked clear color. My concern is, you know, that piece of plastic is under a lot of tension. It wants to be a flat piece of plastic unless they actually molded it. If it is a flat piece of plastic, that thing is going to pop up eventually, maybe if the glue isn't strong enough to hold it in that that shape. I will say though, it's uh, today, at least right now, these windscreens look very impressive. I mean, they're curved very nicely. They have these decals on top of them. This one might be clearer. Hold on. It's got a, you know, it's got like a, one of the sun breaks. It's some sort of break right here in the color of the windscreen. Whereas this one doesn't have it. It's interesting, the, the windscreens are totally different. So that one's got like a horizontal line going across. This one doesn't. You can see all that yellow in there. What, what we, can we see in this one? It seems all black on this this particular car. So that's, there's a seat belt maybe? I see a little yellow right there. I would, uh, maybe that's a harness logo or something. Yeah, it's really hard to see. It's really hard to say. Uh, and I'm okay with that. All right. 
I'm really more about the outside appearance of a model than the inside. But there's something something going on. Maybe that's the central column or something. It keeps the uh, head from getting knocked around so it's very tall. So the helmet just bumps into that instead of the person getting whiplash. All right. So with this funky base, I really can't put on the spin thing with other models. Here's that Kyosha I mentioned earlier, uh, 333 SP. So this is one model that I would love to see come back as a resin model of this quality. With the, you know, that would be nice to see. Uh, but I guess Kyosha did an okay job. The problem is Kyosha never released this in a racing livery, to my recollection. Please leave a comment if I'm wrong, because I would love to get this with the Momo livery. Hmm, let's just pop that in there. I guess you can kind of see some sort of family resemblance there, considering it's like been 50 years apart. At least at the front end, maybe? Well, anyways. Some more modern cars here. We have the Toyota TS-050. This is by Sparky. They don't take any credit for their work, so <laughs> it's kind of weird. But Sparky uses decals also, so not. Um, I kind of shied away from collecting this brand. Maybe I'll go back to them one day. Uh, yeah, these modern vehicles are really funky to look at, though. Uh, let's try to fit that on there. And then uh, another one is the Porsche 919H from 2017. I don't know if this won that race or not, but uh, I like Porsche as a company more because, you know, they're more serious about racing uh, in the LMP. Obviously, Ferrari puts their money into Formula 1. I don't know, it's just not me, Formula 1, doing the same lap over and over and again, just uh, during the peak peak hours of the day. Well, they do have night races, which might be cooler. I just prefer the idea of racing for 24 hours, even though there's three people doing it. So those are the die casts. Let's get these out of here then. I'll just show off two resins here. So here's a Ferrari P3 four slash 4. I believe this could have won the 24 hours of Daytona. No branding. I don't know who made this. <laughs> I think it was MY64. These are one of the, all these fly-by-night operations. And then here's a 250 GTO. Again, I don't know who made this. Maybe DMH D or MY64. I can't remember everything I review. If you look at my, I have over 2,000 videos on this, this channel, so in an auto, it's just a lot. All right, so you can see the sizing difference here. Let me change the view here. I mean, look how small that P34 is now compared to these modern things. Uh, yeah, it's it makes sense. I mean, even this thing looks pretty small compared to these more modern race cars. And that's the same as happened in F1. Those things are behemoths now. Okay, fine model. Well, I gotta say, they are fine models. It's just that all glaringly messed up choice of wheel color. I don't know what was going on there. Again, I theorized maybe there was a release where they actually had black wheels. And this is a way for them to sell more product by having gunmetal wheels. If someone that really knows about these cars uh, could comment, did these actually ever race with gunmetal colored wheels? If they did race with you know wheels of this color during, that, during these races, then that's perfectly fine. Uh, I will feel a little bit better about my purchase. I also noticed the wing colors are quite different. That's yellow, and that's got some, uh, you know, black and yellow there. And the inner verticals of those wings also have a graphic on them, which is another nice touch. So, uh, there's so much going on on these models, uh, pieces, pieces wise, color wise, paint wise, decal wise, that uh, it's actually I'm very happy that more wasn't wrong with these things. Uh, it's I think it's. I've come to realize it's almost impossible to get a perfect model in this hobby. Uh, it's, no matter what you pay, it's very rare. It's like one in a hundred. You gotta buy a hundred models before you can get a perfect one. And that's kind of a sad reflection of this hobby, which is kind of also why I, I'm, I collect other things. 
that don't make me so uh, annoyed. But I gotta say, these are nice. Uh, so if you miss these releases, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, this brand goes away and these models come out again just under a different brand name. So, they're just, they're, so I guess if you're patient enough, maybe they'll come out again just under a different company. So, alright, well, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next resin video. Bye.